as you know, starting any process, um, yeah, you got to go find all your stuff. So um, we haven't opened anything in like two years since beer making and moving to the new house. So I thought I would take you on the journey of my rediscovery of all the stuff for beer making. I've been trolling the garage. I found the bottling top. Um, we got a tea making video getting ready over there. I'm trying to get the tape off my hands. Let's see. What do we have in here? Oh, here we go. Okay, so we have uh, bottles and bubblas and capper and caps and some more bottles and thermometer. No, that's hydrometer. Yes, hydrometer. And in this one, if I can get it open, the kitchen is a mess. Oh, this is dusty. All right, I need two hands. Okay. Okay, I had two hands for that, sorry. Uh, this looks like it's just saved bottles, including Coke bottles. So, yeah, we're getting there. Getting stuff together. Um, looks like there's the tap for this bucket, because it has a, or this bucket, one of these buckets. Yeah, has a hole in the side. Slowly getting it together. Whoo, okay, so. After digging through the garage for like two hours and looking for all the stuff because we had our old beer making equipment and then I knew that we bought a bunch more secondhand at some garage sales and stuff like that along the way. It's been like two years. I can't believe it's been like two years. But um, I think I have it all assembled here. So um, I'm just doing an initial cleaning. Uh, a lot of stuff is dusty. You can see on bottles like this. Can you see that? Dust. Dust. So I'm putting a bunch of stuff in the dishwasher and washing out other washing a bunch of other stuff by hand. So um, I'll just give you a quick tour, just so you can know that this is a process for us. All right. So gathered like previous chemicals. Chemicals don't go bad. Neither does bentonite and stuff like that. There's a bottle capper. There's another bottle capper somewhere. There's some wood. There's some sanitizer. Um, we got more sanitizer here. We got a crap load of bottles. So I got all these bottles. I say secondhand. They're actually brand new. They're still in the box. They've never been used. Um, they're just dusty because stupid me didn't close the tops. But anyway, so we got three boxes of bottles here. Doot, doot, doot. Got our tubs emptied of all those other bottles. I got them loaded in the dishwasher. Again, this is not the sanitizing. This is just getting the dust and muck and years of stuff off there. Um, some other pieces in there. Got a little hose, got some funnel. I'll put some more stuff in there. But um, yeah, more stuff over here. Just, just washing and scrubbing, washing and scrubbing. So, oh, by the way, Will's potato salad, delicious. All right, process. <laughs> So this is how I'm loading the dishwasher. Yeah, just a lot of washing going on there. Might be, might be more bottles up here. All right, I think I finally have achieved the first round of cleaning all the bits and bobs and the buckets. Still some bottles to go and the dishwasher is still loaded, but we are getting there. I know y'all wanted to know that. It's a beautiful thing, hot and clean bottles galore. Still got another case to go, but this is the first part. All right, we just got over here to Bottoms Up Brew Supply, which is here in Seaside. Apparently they do quite a business. We've been in here before, but um, I don't think we've bought anything. So right. let's go check it out. So we're waiting to talk to the guy, but he's with some other customers. We've got all kinds of good stuff in here. So I'm excited. We just talked to the gentleman. He's still working with some other people, but um, he has a recipe that we're going to try. It's inspired by Inkerstein beer. So um, it's a Kolsch style. I'm trying to be quiet because there's people here. But um, yeah, it's a nice little store and uh, very friendly here. This smells amazing. Uh, yeah, he's 
so here's the recipe we're going for gathering the supplies. He's grabbing something. Smell like. Oh, it smells nice. I had to make a little substitution in the hops because they don't have it, but otherwise, all here, good to go with the recipe. Hi everybody, Rob Jones back in the kitchen and today we are doing something special. We are gonna be making a Pilsner style beer today. We got a recipe from our local brewery supply place. It is called Bottoms Up Home Supply here in Seaside. Um, this is called Anchors Up California Common. So originally what we wanted to do is we wanted to do a Pilsner style Kolsch beer, but the problem is, is we don't have any refrigeration. So we were looking for a yeast that would be good at room temperature and still fulfill, still make a nice Pilsner and uh, be good to drink and not too bitter. So let's get started. Uh, let me show you what we have in front of me. All right, you guys. So I thought I would pray professor. I've got my pointer stick here, also known as a pumping tube. But uh, so I just wanted to give you a brief overview of all the things that we're going to be using today and tell you that this is not as daunting as you might think. Um, I also give you a price on what things cost so you know and what your yield is going to be. Okay, so just giving a quick overview here. Since our last brew video, we have acquired a new bottle here. It's a five gallon Italian glass blown bottle for our fermentation. We also have six bottles of, we're using Crystal Geyser. That's just our local water that's uh, purified and we want to have something good tasting because our tap water is fine for drinking, but it's high in minerals. So we wanted to control the flavor there. Uh, we have a recipe which we got yesterday at the Bottoms Up Home Brew here in Seaside, California. Excited that they had a recipe that we could follow that works well locally. Uh, so for beer making, we have uh, six pounds of malt extract. We have one pound of the uh, broken malt here, and that is called, I'm trying to read, Crystal 40. That's what that's called. This is a Pilsner Light Malt six pounds we also have some corn sugar dextrose which is going to be used for priming of the bottles speaking of bottles we are going to be filling approximately 40 pints from this big one to the little one it'll probably be less than that but here's our bottle here um, we also have a sock for the barley to go into we have a thermometer here we also have a thermometer there and a hydrometer what else can i pour it to what's the what's the pill called again world flock, world flock. We also have a thing over here called Wolflock, which is a peat moss from Ireland, which will help in the clarification of the process. Uh, we have a airlock. We have a stopper for the top, which will go together in the top of the bottle. Um, something to stir along the way. This is wood, easily sanitized, um, trying to keep as much metal out as possible. So we may not even use the metal um, thermometer. And what else do we have? We have some sandy clean and we have a funnel here to get it all in there because going from the big pot in the back which our two gallon pot is going to be a lot whoo 
And since I forgot to put it in this picture, we're going to show you the things I forgot because they were in the refrigerator. So we have the Chinook Alpha Acid Hops here. We have two bags of that, so two ounces total. And we also have our yeast back here, which is a lager yeast. Again, I'll put the recipe down below. Okay, so you saw there's not that much involved here. There's a lot of parts and pieces, parts, there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of parts and pieces, but there's not a lot of ingredients. And I wanted to let you guys know that the total cost of this uh, the I even have my receipt here. Let me grab it for you. So for the brewing supplies It was forty one dollars and forty nine cents plus water. We have six gallons at about six bucks So seriously for forty seven and a half bucks we might get up to 40 pints of beer So that's a pretty good value. I think um, if anybody's looking for those kind of numbers. There you go Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is sanitize our equipment and get to cooking. So let's get to sanitizing first Okay, you guys, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to sanitize our kitchen. I've already sprayed everything down from bleach. It's evaporated and all that kind of good stuff. Now we need to make a sani bath and we're gonna clean our products and then we'll get to cooking. All right, let's go. Okay, guys, we're over here at the sink and the first thing I did is I cleaned the kitchen and I used a bleaching agent. This is uh, just what I have on hand. I did the sink, I did the counters, I did everything else. We are just trying to minimize pathogens, so we can set that aside. Uh, once you either rinse down everything or let it dry naturally, the chlorine bleach will come off. I'm going to fill the sink uh, with water, warm water, hot water. We're using something called Sandy Clean. It's a low foam acid uh, rinse and it is food safe, although you should let it dry after you use it so that way it goes away. So what you do is it's kind of cool. You just squeeze it here. It fills up this little thing, one ounce to three gallons of water, and you just dump it in. There you go. It's pre-measured. Now we'll just fill up our water and rinse all of our goodies. Uh, it recommends on here three minutes to let things soak, so let's do that. Bubble up cork. We'll do these items last because they're glass. It also says to put our yeast, but we're gonna be very careful with that. It actually says on here to sanitize the bag. So we're gonna do that last and we're gonna do it quickly because we don't wanna heat up the yeast too much. Got everything sanitized, on to the next step. Okay guys, we have our Golden 40. This is a barley that has been toasted. It's a particular, um, this is just the small pieces in the back. It's toasted, it's roasted. Uh, we smelled this at the shop. It smells really great. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give flavor, color, sugar, it's gonna give all that. So it's almost kind of like a spice packet, but we also have the malt. Um, syrup. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you. Take our little bowl and we have our sock here. It's sewn at one end and what this is going to do is it's going to create like a tea bag. So just going to open this up a little bit here. It's very stretchy as you can see. It's like a black hole. I'm going to put it around here. Put that in the middle. Open it up. And then, snippy snippy! And then we're just going to dump this in. Like that. Shake it, shake it. Whoa, it smells so good, you guys. And then look at that. Boom. Just like that. So we can also take it, since we have so much, try to keep some of the pieces out. We can take it and we can flip it back over itself. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. And then go back over itself. So get less stuff in your brew and then you can just make a simple overhand knot and another one so it's a square knot boom boy scout special now you can see this powder stuff comes out it's just finely ground okay 
We just want to prepare that while our water comes to boil. I was going to use that, didn't need it. So, there you go. Okay guys, we're over here at the stove, and so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put two gallons of water into the pot. These are fresh, unopened. See if we can do the chef's trick of making a tornado. There you go. Super fill. All right, we're just going to bring this to a boil. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, you guys, totally made a mistake. We are not going to boiling. We are going to 160 degrees. So let's check where we're at now. The water looks like it's about 78 or 80 degrees. We're going to 160 Fahrenheit. That's where we're going to steep the uh, grain. All right. All right, you guys, we are at 159, one more degree, and we'll be at temperature. All right, I'm gonna call it. We're gonna take that out. Set her down carefully. Turn off the fire. All right, and then we have our lovely little packet here. We're going to pop this in, let it sink. All right, we're gonna let our tea brew for 20 to 30 minutes. I've got a timer set for 25. You can already maybe see the brown liquid. Maybe you can't see, but there we go. All right, let's let it brew. All right, we'll see you in 25 minutes. Timer now. Guess what time it is? All right, you guys. So we opted to go for the 30 minutes. We didn't think that it had brewed long enough. We were doing a little, excuse the expression, tea bagging here. And uh, a lot more of the sugars and, and uh, color have come out. So that's what we're looking for. I think we're just gonna give it a couple shakes here. And then we'll just remove the bag. All right, so I'm just letting it drain out here a little bit, get all the flavor and all the color. All right, so I think we're pretty good here. I think we've gotten most of the juice out. Boom. Okay, the next step is we have our golden light sugar here. So we're gonna give it a little snippy snippy. Um, if you're familiar with malt powder, like it goes in a milkshake or whatever, that's basically what this is. It's just the sugar from the malt. So you're going to dump all of this in carefully. And then with our sanitized spatula, although this is very hot, so it's not like it's going to get contaminated. We're going to dissolve this and then we're going to bring this to a boil one hour right yes we're gonna bring this to a boil for one hour a slow rolling boil okay we're just about dissolved here so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring this to a boil and as soon as it comes to a boil we're gonna turn it down to a low simmer and we're going to add our first hops we're gonna do hops in three different um, pieces today Okay, you guys, we are waiting for our pot to come to a boil. So in the meantime, we thought we'd weigh out the hops because we're going to do the hopsing in three different uh, waves. The first one is going to require 0.75 ounces. So we have two packets. Uh, they were both one ounce. So here's one. It's not opened yet. And here's the other. You guys can see what the hops looks like. It's like little pellets and it smells, it smells like rabbit food. It smells like a combination of rabbit food, like grass and really strong pine smell. So here it is. So that's the full ounce. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to weigh out and get three quarters of an ounce. Set that for the tear. And boop a doop a doop a doop. Boop a doop. Almost. There we go. Right on the mark, 0.75 if you can't read that. And now we're gonna put that into our pot when it comes to a boil. Okay, so we thought we would just keep going as long as we're gonna do all the weights and measures, we might as well do them at the same time. So I'm gonna open the other one here. 
So in theory, we have a quarter ounce there. We've done the tear weight at zero. So we're just going to go to the next quarter ounce, which will be 0 0.25, 0 0.26, close enough. Nope, let's go for perfection. Two seven, what? There we go, 0 0.25. Okay, and in this bag, we still have 0.75 of an ounce, so that'll be the third hops. Okay, now we've got all our, all our hops ready to go. Okay, you guys, we are getting there. It is just starting to boil. You can probably see it shimmering in the light. See it shimmering. Give it a little stir. I want to get it to a full rolling boil. A full 212, 213. All right, look at that. Can you guys see it? It is at a light boil. Light boil there, light boil there. Couple more seconds. There we go. We've got a boil. All right, so now we're gonna do what they call flame out. So flame off, fire is out. We're gonna give it a little bit of a stir. And now, as I don't hit the camera, our first hops, first hops, three quarters of an ounce. Boom, in the pot. All right, we're gonna give that a light stir. You can see it's breaking up in there. The pelleted hops, um, Really, look at that. It's it's very small. All right, let's give it a stir. Make sure it's in well. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, lid on. Boom. All right, 60 minute, no, sorry. 40 minute countdown. Starting the timer now. See you in 40 minutes for the second hop sing. Yes, it's that time again. All right, so we are at the countdown for 60 minutes. We've gone 40 minutes, so it's time for our next pitch. Next pitch is half ounce into the pot. Boom. Give it a little whirl. All right, that's easy peasy. So now we're going to wait five more minutes, and then we're going to put the whirl fluck. If you're wondering what that is, it's an Irish peat moss which helps to do a separation of the solids and liquids in the beer later on. Boop, boop. All right, five more minutes. Look at that, it's time again. All right, it's been five minutes. Here comes the Vroflok. In the hot pot with a tablet. So it comes like this, it's a compressed tablet. We're going to open it up. No, this is not drones. All right, in the pot. Oh, it's fizzing. Oh, that's interesting. I was not expecting that. Oh, you guys, it smells really good. It smells very hopsy. All right, 15 more minutes, then our final pitch of hops. Oh, there it is. Fizzy, fizz. Look at that. Interesting. Maybe I didn't read the right thing online. You know what that means? It means we're done finally. Okay. So, all right, last pitch. Here we go. Take off the pot. Bum, bum, ba -dum. Dun, 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 dun. All right, one more sniff because it smells good. Mmm, all right, here goes our final pitch. All the hops, all the Chinook. And I'll give it a little stir. Okay, so fire's off, it's cooling down slowly. We're gonna move this over to the sink so it can slowly cool down. We need to get it between 60 and 80 degrees in order to pitch the yeast. So we thought we'd put it in the sink. We'll let this uh, cool for an hour or so. And uh, if it's still not cool enough, we can put some water bath around it and bring it down quickly. But what we're going to do is we're going to add the malt syrup. So let's move this over to the sink and add the malt syrup. All right, you guys, we're over here at the sink. We have our extract and we have our very hot liquid here. So we're just going to pour, 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 pour. Remember, it's going to look, it's going to look like a lot, but this is going to get diluted with three more gallons of water eventually.
And guys, it smells super hopsy. All right, I'm gonna call it good. There we go. I think we got it pretty clean. All right, now we wanna get this malt mixed in all the way. You feel it on the bottom. It's like honey in your tea. Okay guys, I've been stirring this for about five minutes. I think we are about there. It seems like there's nothing left on the bottom. Set that there. And now we're gonna take a little temperature reading, see where we're at here. Climbing fast. 120, 130, 140, 150. Okay, we're at about 156, 158, which is way too hot. So here's what we're gonna do. We got the stopper in the sink. We're gonna put some cold water. Our tap water here is 70 degrees. So that is the perfect temperature. So let's, so let's seal this up and we're gonna put some cold water around it and then we're gonna go to lunch. Okay guys, just to save water because we are in California, we just dropped in some gallons here which we're gonna use eventually anyway, but just to take up some room in the sink since it's so giant. Okay, our wart is here, it is cooling. We're going for 65 degrees if possible, maybe. And we're gonna to go to lunch, so we'll see you when this is cooled down. Hello, we're here at sushi time, getting some lunch, and I don't think we can get any closer. Closer. some lunch or dinner whatever you want to call it um, we are back here we still have the water in here we had to change the water once um, because it was too warm but let's take the temperature we should be close I'm gonna give this just a little stir carefully it is glass and let's see where we're at here looks like we are at about 77 degrees 78 so we are good so we just needed to blow, be below 80. We don't want to cook the yeast. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this off. I'm going to drain the sink. We're going to get the bottle. We're going to get it set up. And then we'll um, transfer this to the bottle. And then we're going to add the water in. All right, so let's do that. Okay, you guys, we've got our uh, fermenter over here. This is a five-gallon jug. It's from Italy. We're kind of excited. It's the first time we used it. Uh, we cleaned it. We sterilized it. We cleaned and sterilized our funnel. And now we got our juice. Our juicy juice. Okay, so this is going to be the challenge. All right, we just moved it around a little bit. Uh, Raccoon's going to hold this just hopefully so we can not, not spill any of this. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, if you lift it up a little bit, we'll let the air. There we go. Making beer. So now we're just going to put some water in the pot just to rinse it out, make sure we get all the goodness. So remember, we're going to fill this up to five gallons total. That should be approximately two now. All right. So 
So that's all of our wart. How much head space do we need to leave? Uh, that is quite a bit, isn't that? Right? Why is it so heavy? Ooh, it's kind of growing too. That's not a good sign. So we're a little concerned right now because we're at the four gallon mark and this bottle is not five gallon. So, this is a four gallon bottle, not a five gallon bottle. <laughs> All right, so we did not measure our bottle before, but we know we have put four gallons in here and it is almost full. And so I'm thinking we're kind of done. Agreed? Yes. Okay, so it looks like we're making four gallons, not five gallons. This bottle is not five gallons. We thought it was, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna clean up the top of this Actually, it doesn't matter yet. We're gonna mix this well, and then we're gonna take a sample and check it with our hydrometer. Yeah. All right, so I'm just, I'm just rolling it around here, getting some of the foam down, and uh, making sure all the water and the wort are mixed well. We wanna get a good sugar count. Take a sample. All right, we're looking. Uh, here. Okay. There we go. Look at that. It's like Jupiter. Still swirling by itself. How cool is that? That's really cool. Okay, guys, we have our column of beer here with everything in it. So we're just testing the sugar. Um, this is our hydrometer, and it's going to tell us what the potential alcohol is. I'm gonna have to move this for one second because of the cabinet. We'll just drop it in, let it go. Whoa, and then we'll move it back so you guys can see. Define gravity. Let's see what we got here. All right, so in bricks, it looks like we got about nine, nine bricks. In the potential alcohol volume, about 5%, maybe just under 5%. Okay, that's verified with two of us. We have just under 5% potential is what we are seeing in there now. So we are going to pitch our yeast. So let's do that. And because I'm a curious person and we're always doing taste tests, we want to taste the wart. So this is the wart we measured for the alcohol. You can hear the dishwasher already running. So we can taste this. Oh, it's kind of hopsy. It's sweet. It tastes like flat, dead beer that's been sitting out at a party for two days. No carbonation. Um, slightly sweet and definitely got some hopsy flavor to it. Now you know. Okay guys, we are using Imperial Yeast. This is the Lager Cable Car L05. It says 200 billion cells brewing yeast, pitch right. Um, proudly grown in Portland, Oregon, so um, that's kind of exciting. It was manufactured on March 6th, 2019. Um, it is telling us all the good stuff we need to know here. And it says uh, the best is between 55 and 65. We're gonna be just around there when we put it in the other room. So all we're gonna do now is pour this in and give it a mix. And to make this simple, you just give it a shake. You wanna make sure you get all the, all the parts and pieces mixed up. Remember we sterilize the bag. 
Now I'm just going to use our old friend Snippy. And if all goes well. Just going to pull it like this. There we go. You see that going in there? Like mother's milk. Like a cow. There we go. Looks exciting, you guys. Look, that no mess, no mess, no fuss. Okay, guys, our yeast is in here. You can see it's the cloudy layer here. This is totally looking like Jupiter here. So we're just going to swirl it a little bit. Let me put the cork back in. Got the cork. Just covering it with my thumb just so the splash is out none. This is the manly part. All right, I think we're pretty, pretty mixed there. Okay. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna move this into the other room. We're actually putting it in a bathroom. Uh, just because it's temperature controlled, it's a bathroom we don't use. It's nice and clean and shiny. It's gonna sit in the bathtub in case it does blow up for some reason. Uh, we're going to put a tube in here for the first couple days into a bubbler because in our experience, it just goes everywhere otherwise. And then we'll switch that over to a regular bubble in a couple days. All right, let's move this to the other room. Okay, you guys, you can see we've changed locations. This is where we're gonna end this video. This is gonna be part one. So this is the initial setup of our beer and our fermentation. And we're stopping here because it's gonna be two weeks before this is ready. But we're hoping to film a slow-mo of this actually activating. So we've got our wort, we've got our yeast, we've got everything pitched and ready to go. As far as it goes, this is the beer. So it's just gonna go through its process. We're gonna filter it down and bottle it. But, so this is the end of part one. Thanks for watching. Um, what you can see here is you can see we just have an air tube. It has a bubble of water in it so that things can't go backwards into it. And then we just have it into a glass of water. Um, in our experience in the past, we've had the yeast blow up quite severely. And if we just had a little bubbler, it would fill up and it might jam and then that would foul and be nasty. So we'll do this for a couple days. Uh, you'll see on the video that it'll go fast. And then we'll change out to a small bubbler for a couple more days after that. So, all right, you guys, this is the end of part one. We'll pick up part two with the end of the fermentation and the bottling process. I'm Robert Jones. This is Yudimonius Mark II. I'd like to say a special thanks to Raccoon for helping out today with this project. Very exciting to have somebody else uh, doing the camera and everything with me and getting to drink some beer at the end. I hope you guys like this video. Give it a like, give it a subscribe, and we'll see you next time. By the way, the recipe is down below. Take care. All right, you guys, what we're doing is we're setting up a GoPro so we can catch the action because we uh, had a really fun time with the fermentation last time. So Raccoon's setting that up. All right, so good to go. Just need some cables. You can see here's how the magic really happens. Clean bathroom, setting up. All right, so we got the camera set up. Hopefully you can see that. Some slow-mo action. That's how the magic happens, people. There it is. Fancy. Nothing like being watched. All right. See you in three days, baby. Bye. Whew, behind the scenes now. That is only taking us, let's see. It's eight o'clock. It's only taken us eight hours to film the first part of the beer video. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay, it's in the can, it's in the bag. It's literally in the can.